Here we're going to work on a few percent applications. So let's look at a few questions in question two, we're told that 243 people out of 400 people state they like dogs. And this could be done with a poll or interviewed or however they found out this information. But we want to figure out what percent this is. So here we have 400 people. Here we have three, 243 people. So why don't we go work this out on the whiteboard and figure out what this percent is. This is a situation where we must look at percent as a part over a whole. And then multiply it by 100% in order to get the percent. So the first part here, the part over the whole, will be our fraction, and then we'll multiply it by 100% to get our percent. So let's look at the information we have. So we're going to, in this, we survey or interview, or however we get the information, 400 people. And we ask them whether or not they like dogs. And we found that 243 of them said that they liked dogs. So we ask ourselves in this information, looking at this information, what is the total? Well, the total would be all the people that we surveyed or interviewed. So the total or whole would be 400 people. And the part are the ones who say they liked, like dogs. So the part in this case, like dogs, would be the 240. Now we set up the fraction as the part of the whole. So we said that the part is 240 and the whole is all the people we interviewed or surveyed. And we get, and if we divide that fraction, we get 0. 0.5. 6075. But that's not our percent. We don't have the percent until we either multiply it by 100 or move the decimal point over two places and put on the percent sign. So we can do move the decimal point over two places and put on the percent sign, or we can multiply. times 100% and we get also 60.75%. So again, either way you do it is fine. If you like to move over, this is a little bit quicker moving over the decimal point, but it's a little bit clearer when you just multiply it by 100%. So as we figured out on the whiteboard, we found that what this means is of the people who are polled or interviewed, 60.75 stated they liked dogs. And as I said on the whiteboard, you, could, you, you may have noticed that per, percent can be found in two different ways. This way by multiplying the decimal by a percent and the other way by moving the decimal point and placing the percent sign to the right of it. In question three, it states, to win the election, 
as a president of the United States of America, a person must obtain 270 out of 538 possible votes from the electoral, electoral college. What percentage of the overall electoral votes is this? Round your answer to the nearest tenth of a percent. So, as in our other problems, we will go work out the details in the whiteboard and come back to the PowerPoint. In question three, again, we have a situation where we have a part over a whole. So, here we have part over and the part is the number of elect of electorates of a number of votes we need from the electoral college divided by the whole, which would mean the, all the possible votes that there are in the electoral college. So all possible or number of all possible votes. So in this case, one would need in order to win in the electoral college 700 I mean, 270 votes out of 538 possible votes from the Electoral College. So we want to figure out, well, what percent is that? So we take this and we want to convert this fraction here and we want to convert it into a decimal. So we take 270 divided by 538, and we find that when we divide that, we get 0 0.5018. And then what we want to do is we want to find the percent. That's just the, that's just the decimal. We want to find the actual percent. So in order to do that, as we said earlier, we can move the decimal over two places and add a percent sign to get 50.18%, or we can take 0 0.5018 times 100%, and we get 50.18%. Eight percent. Now the question also asks us to round to the nearest tenth. So here's the tenth and here's the hundredth place. So we see in the hundredth place there's an eight. Now in order to, we want to figure out should that one remain a one or do we round it to a two? Well according to rounding rules if the one next to it is five or over, then this one will go to two. If it's under five, it will remain a one. Now, since it's an eight, this means if we round to the nearest tenth, it will be 50.2%. And similarly for here, percent, and that means we have rounded it to the nearest tenth. So now coming back to the PowerPoint, I'll just fill it in so it's much clearer now. So here we have 270 over 538, just like we did on the whiteboard. We turned it into a decimal, and from the decimal, we got a percent, and we found it was 50.2%. Or you can move the decimal point and put the percent sign to the right. 
In question number four, we're, at, we're told that the sales tax in a town is 9.4%. How much tax will you pay on a $140 purchase? Now, here we're only asked for the tax, not the final purchase. So we'll go to the whiteboard and work out the details of how we can find how much tax we have to add to our purchase. So here we have a situation where our tax is equal to 9.4% of our purchase. So that would be of our purchase since our purchase is $140 that we want to find 9.4% of $140. So the first thing we must do is take this percent and convert it into a decimal. Now recall that there are two ways to convert it into a decimal. One is by moving the decimal point to the left two places and getting rid of the percent. And the other one is simply taking the 9.4%, dividing it by 100%. And we find that when we do that, we get 0 0.09%. Now, in order to figure out what, what the exact dollar amount our tax is, we want to take this decimal and we want to multiply it by the cost of our purchase. So we have 0 0.094 and our purchase was $140. And when we multiply this, and remember your dollar sign, we get 13 point, $13.16. So the tax on our $140 purchase is $13.16. Coming back to our PowerPoint, I'll just fill it in as I've done. And so here, just like we found on the whiteboard, we found that we would we would have have to pay an extra thirteen dollars and sixteen cents in tax. So this would be the amount we have to pay in tax, and then of course our purchase was $140. And we would add that tax to our purchase when we go shopping. In question number five, says, in a recent poll, 28% of 750 individual poll polled indicated they would vote Democrat in the next election. How many of the individuals would vote, vote a straight Democratic ticket? So we'll go to the whiteboard and work out the details. In question number five, we have 750 individuals that are polled. And, we and we're told that 28% of them are going to vote Democrat. Now, we want to know exactly how, mu how many people does 28% represent. Well, we want, in order to do that, we do it in a very similar fashion as we did when we calculated the tax of our purchase. So what we want to do is we want to take our 28% and we want to convert that into a decimal. 
So however you like to convert it into a decimal, moving it over two places to the left and dropping the percent sign or dividing it by 100%, you'll still get as your decimal 0.28. Now you want to take the 0.28 and you want to multiply it by the total number of people that you polled. times 750 people. So when you multiply 0.28 times 750, you find that you get 250 people, 250, but remember they're 250 people, so it's very important that you write people. Otherwise, one has no idea what you're talking about. So it's 250 people said they would vote Democrat. And that would be the answer to this question. So remember, it's very important that when you're doing these types of problems to take your percent and convert it into a decimal and then you take your whole and you multiply the decimal by whatever your whole is represented by. As we found in the whiteboard, okay, whiteboard, we found that what 28% of 750 means is that it means that of that those 750 people, 210 will vote straight Democrat. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you very much for watching. Take care. Bye.